Our next question is from Ronan Gaming. What's your best tip for flighting VFR into an ad, I don't even, advertent IMC condition? <coughs> Inadvertent. What is my, read the question again. What's your best tip for flighting VFR into an advertent IMC condition? Okay, it's 100% at all costs, never ever do it. Mm. He's asking how to go into it? Sounds like it. That, that's the way it reads. I would never inadvertently fly into the clouds, right? You know, the only time you should ever fly into the clouds is if you are via instrument rated, in an instrument rated aircraft, you're current in instruments, you're qualified, you're comfortable, and can legally go do it. You know, avoiding inadvertent IMC, or inadvertent IMC, yeah, inter, inter, <clears throat> inadvertent IMC. Going into the clouds when you're not prepared for it is a problem. It kills people. It kills average everyday pilots. It kills, prof kills professional pilots, kills EMS pilots. I was in that environment for five years flying EMS. And the five years that I was in it, we had the worst year in EMS helicopter crashes in history. And that was around 2008, sometime around there. And I believe the numbers have down, went down hopefully since, and hopefully it's never been as bad as it was that year. But at that time, flying in inadvertent, inadvertently in the clouds was killing multitudes of EMS pilots and crews. They have like the top 10 most dangerous jobs that year we were above it. It, was, it wasn't even on the scale, it was above the scale. And people didn't know about it, people didn't talk about it, but that's a fact. So learning to, number one, make good no-go decisions, right? You never ever want to advertently go into the clouds unless, again, you are prepared, qualified, and legal to do it. Now, can it happen accidentally? It can happen ac accidentally. I've done it. I made a bad weather decision one night. I was in Cleveland. I wanted to come back to Indiana. Boss would let me fly an airplane home. I'm a VFR pilot in a VFR airplane, and the clouds were a little low, but I'm a helicopter guy, so I'm like, well, I'm comfortable flying a little lower. First mistake, I should have never gotten the airplane. And on my trip home, I got into a low layer of clouds, and somehow I was able to keep the aircraft under control get back out of the clouds. And when I landed at an airport, I was at an airport like 40 miles away from where I thought I was landing. Like I was so disor disoriented after it happened and got myself in a mess. Luckily I lived through it. And it, that one event is the one that made me go, okay, this is nothing to play with. I'll tell you another something stupid I did that day. I wanted to get home and I even called flight service and they were like, well, you know, here's the weather along your route. And he said, VFR not recommended. If you ever get that from flight service, if they say those words, I would say, thank you very much. I'd hang up the phone and call it off. I had a airline pilot who was a CFI helicopter as well, worked at the same place. He's like, he was looking at the weather that I was looking at flying in. He's like, dude, don't do it. Just stay here the weekend. It's not worth it. And I'm the idiot that made the choice because I had get homeitis. So being prepared for it, you know, if you're not flying in really good conditions, the only way you should even be attempting to fly where you might run into a weather problem is if you are fully 100% prepared, you've flown instruments, you're qualified, and then if you go in inadvertent, you have to claim an emergency and ask for help. You have to. I haven't talked a lot about Kobe in the past few years just because so many people made videos on it right off the bat, and I know another pilot that was there that day that said he should have never, his pilot should have never taken off. But I recently watched a, a really well put together documentary, and it sounds like, you know, that the pilot was qualified, he had a good reputation, was the chief pilot, I believe, of the company, or had a high position. He had the opportunity to claim for an emergency and call for help, and he didn't, as far as we know. It kills a lot of people, and You'd think, well, just call, you know, why wouldn't a person just call for help? Pilots don't want to screw, the, they don't want to admit they made a mistake or they're worried about getting fired when they get home. The only thing you can do if you go inadvertent is get on your instruments. Hopefully you have the instruments you need to keep the thing level. Hopefully you've had enough training 
that you can survive it and you got to squawk an emergency, call for help and say, I want an inadvertent IMC, I'm in the clouds, I need help. I need to get somewhere and I need, you know, I need help. And they will talk you through it. And another important note on that, this is why on the commercial rating helicopter, you have to have five hours minimum instrument time in a helicopter. I know for a fact where that comes from. Right, direct from our examiner, he said, that five hours can be done by a CFI, it doesn't even have to be a double I. You need the basic minimum training on what to do if you go inadvertent. And so what we do is we practice with the person, we'll say, okay, let's say you went inadvertent IMC, you know, flip on the foggles or use the fancy Icarus device, like we have, a, have one of those units over here, and then give the student or the pilot that you're training you give them vectors to certain altitudes, turn directions, and you kind of like play like you're the tower and you're gonna help this person talking through them through communications on which way to turn, what altitude to go to, and help you get diverted to an airport and get you down and out of the clouds. That's what that five hours is for. And we know that that five hours is the bare minimum. Like, is it enough that it could keep you from killing yourself? Maybe, maybe. In some instances, no, that five hours isn't gonna be enough. So this is a big topic, and it's why we created the Hogs No-Go button, and we've been talking about this basically, the last few days we've been hitting it pretty hard because we've been giving them away. Live to fly another day, helicopterground.com. And that's the point. You decide the weather's iffy, you're not sure you can do it VFR, hit Live the button, fly another day. make the choice, I'm not going and forget about it, move on with your day. And that's, I won't go into the whole story how we made the button because I tell it all the time, but that's where we initiated the no-go button and that's why we send them out to our members after they pass their check ride, send us in a picture for the Hogs Wall of Fame, we send you a no-go button. And I know for a fact that they talk about them at flight schools. We had one guy, I think he got his private and then he got his commercial. And he said, hey, you gave me a no-go for the private. Can I get another no-go for the commercial? And he said, I asked because I left it at the flight school and the kids there are having fun hitting the button and we've been discussing the no-go decision. And I'm like, that's perfect, right? That's the idea. It's a, it's a conversation piece. And it's also something, something to give yourself a little pat on the back or a little break after you've made the decision to just stay on the ground. So making good pilot decisions, understanding weather, having good um, conservative weather minimums so that you don't ever fly into the clouds unprepared because it, it'll kill you. This is PD, Private Pilot 101 Helicopter Training Blueprint. The link is down below to get a free PDF. So you sign up with your email and you'll immediately be able to down, download the free PDF. You'll also have an opportunity to purchase the paperback if you would like. So that link is down below along with a link for askhogs.com. If you're new to us, we have a clone, 14 years of my digital contents piped into it. You can ask it questions 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Here's a tip on the clone though. It's got a lot of content in it, but we've had some people asking specific questions like, with a, you know, can I fly into this specific airport? Can I do this, right? Like we haven't fed the clone actual supplement charts. So, Asking it things like how many miles from this airport to that airport is not going to have that information. We haven't loaded it with that kind of information. We've loaded it with all my videos, podcasts, you know, blogs, paid content, free content. It's all in there. But, we, you know, we don't teach, you know, that, that whole sectional chart part of aviation isn't loaded into the clone. So it has its limits on what you can ask. But you can ask anything helicopter flight and ground related, related directly to learning. So there's 19 of you previous, oh, sorry, 18. We have our 19th coming in just about a week that we're gonna finish up. So we have a few spots left for the spring of 2025. So you gotta get in now if you want one of these, because as course, as we're moving into spring, People are talking, they're calling. So we've got like three spots left for the spring. If you wanna get in, we're going to put a link down below this video. We've got a 
short questionnaire to see if you qualify for the final approach course. Go through that at the link below, answer the question and we'll get back to you if you look like you're a good fit or we're a good fit to get you finished up. We got three spots basically for the spring so we can make you number 20, number 21, and number 22 on the Hogs Wall of Fame. And these are limited because I'm just saying, I'm not sure exactly how long I'm gonna continue this. I got some other things I got cooking. So I don't know, if you wanna get finished, you need to go below, fill out that form, answer the questions, and we'll get back to you right away and we'll look and see if we can get you set up to get your rating finished. So you have two choices. R22 or R44. And the way this works, we do a minimum of three days. So we're going to work together doing the flying and ground for three days. Day number four, take a check ride. So three hours of flight prep, one hour for the check ride. Again, this is minimum and we'll have you finished and send you home. So you have two choices, as we said, R22 and R44. So the minimum for the R44 is 6,800 for the minimum package to get you finished. Again, if you need more time, we can always work something out or if you want a VIP package. And then on the minimum for the R22, it's 5,300. Again, that is the minimum. But if we didn't tell you, we've been working with this same examiner for 24 years. We've completed 19 of these. You could be 20, 21, or 22. Get finished up for the spring, get on the schedule now. So go, to, go down below. Fill out that questionnaire and we'll get back to you and see if we can get you finished up. That's all I got. Peace out. When you feel the pressure to fly, but know the right decision is to stay on the ground, hit the hogs, no go, and live to fly another day. Helicopterground.com.